How's it going guys? I guess here from Maker's Muse. So it's extremely late on Sunday night, but I wanted to make this quick video for you guys because the Olo first ever smartphone 3D printer has hit Kickstarter and it's already above a million dollars and heaps of you have been asking about it. And I feel like I need to talk about a few aspects about it that are sort of a little bit concerning to me and something some of you may have not considered about this really attractive low cost 3D printer option from Olo. So to start with, the campaign they've got is super polished. The video is amazing looking and that's everything you'd expect from a really high end Kickstarter project these days. Keep in mind that Kickstarter videos and projects are not real things. They're sort of presentation models and mock-ups. They need to have a element of real technology that is proven to be working like a like a functional prototype but everything else is kind of faked fake it to make it if you like which is which is cool that's what you do on kickstarter if you have a working prototype um if you have a working product that's ready to go you won't go on kickstarter but anyway with that in mind there's a few concerning factors about this design firstly it's a liquid resin based system so i haven't uh, I don't own any liquid resin systems, but I have worked with some in the past and they are extremely messy. And there's a few concerning factors about liquid resin systems that seem to be glossed over in this video. So they claim to say they've got these daylight curable resins now, which which may be the case, fine. Um, there's still the fact that you're putting your phone underneath these resins with a very thin interface layer and then leaving it for hours on end with no way to see inside the machine. That concerns me. So basically, the output of light from your smartphone will be a magnitude lower than anything else on a commercial DLP system, which uses a projector, which has, you know, you, have, you know how top projectors get. They have a lot of, out, lot of light output. Your smartphone, not so much. So I would say the print time on this machine will be huge. It will be probably an entire day to print things full size. I would say that's not unreasonable. And that's time you can't use your smartphone, which kind of makes the $99 price tag a little bit less attractive if you can't use your $1,000 flagship phone. Anyway, the next concerning factor is the, is the point they're using their bare hands to take a print out of the, the printer and wash it off with water. Uh, if any of you have experienced using UV curable resins, they are extremely toxic and I wouldn't touch them ever and you need to use ethanol to wash them. Now, again, this may be a new class of resin. They are saying it's daylight curable, but if it's daylight curable, why would you store it in a clear bottle? They've got here these lovely looking bottles which aren't black. Any commercial UV sensitive resin or chemical or anything for that matter will have a black bottle to keep the light out. These look pretty, but they would let the light in. So what this is telling me is that it's again a mock-up and they're just that one step further away from having a completed product. And again, Kickstarter projects are early stages, but you may be waiting a very long time to get this, uh, this project, this printer. And then one other thing that Lots of sort of uh, producers of these systems don't like to mention. These machines can't print big flat things. Like printing an ABS, they can't do it. It will warp and curl. And the fact is this suction force, when this layer comes down onto the bed, it needs to separate. So that's why they show stuff like this lattice print because it looks complicated, but actually there's very little contact area on the bottom of that membrane. And going back to the membrane, that has to be completely transparent to transmit light through the from the smartphone screen to that first layer and subsequent layers of resin. So if you're like me, you have your smartphone, you get fingerprints on it, you get dust on it, dirt. That's going to all impede on that print quality. And in commercial systems like the, the Form 2, that, those print beds are actually consumables. They're considered replaceable consumables because every print and subsequent print damages that membrane and there doesn't really seem to be any consideration for that in this project as yet so again these will be hurdles they'll have to these are, these are hurdles they'll have to overcome down the line and things that i think will delay product shipping 
So bottom line, would I back the Olo 3D printer? No, no I wouldn't. There's just too many concerns here and the fact they're saying the deliverable will be in six months, I can't see them meeting that deadline at all. It will definitely creep and possibly quite a while and there's always the risk with Kickstarter projects that they won't deliver like unfortunately the Pirate 3D Buccaneer. Many people ended up without a printer, lost their money and that was everywhere. That was a $10 million Kickstarter project and everyone conveniently sort of forgot that it failed kind of. So do be careful. If you want to pledge on this project, keep in mind that you may never see that money again, but also keep in mind it may be a fantastic product, but there is the concerns I've got about it being a resin system. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions and queries about this system. And I'd be really interested to see if the Olo team actually gets in touch with me to clarify some of my concerns because I'm happy to make another video about it. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. See you later. Bye. Thank you.